Hello and welcome to Center for Victory's podcast, episode number four of Your Best Day Yet. We're here to help unlock, reinforce, and enrich relationships through personal and professional development. I'm Eric Guy. I'm here with my lovely guest, Ms. Colleen Reachaw, who's a senior partner here at Center for Victory. Um, we're picking up where we left off last week. Last week, uh, what we were talking about, what we've been talking about in this series is just really how to supercharge your life. What are those steps to success? And Colleen's here uh, with me to break it down on the next principle that we're going to share, which is uh, being a giver. So I want to start out with with just a quote from Winston Churchill first before I, we get into some, some Q&A and, and dialogue with you, Colleen. But Winston Churchill said, uh, we make a living by what we get but we make a life by what we give. Does that resonate with you? It certainly does. Okay, and how so? Well, it's the idea of being able to give is putting the focus on the other individual Uh versus being self-centered and focusing only on yourself. Okay. That's what I think of that quote. And do you have a a good example of that from anything in your past about how that's paid off for you You when you give? You know, what, what have you gotten? How is it actually led to your success? Well, I think it, was, it has contributed to me personally when I've been able to just give of myself to other people. In other words, being there to listen, because mm-hmm. I think one of the greatest gifts you can give to another individual is to let them know that they've been heard. I'm expecting you to say that. That's a pretty good one. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, One that I need help on, nonetheless. Maybe that's why I didn't want you to say that one. But uh, but that it's definitely a very good one. I that that's uh, that's extremely good. Uh, Is there are there things certain things where you know you particularly like to to give more in like in a certain is there a certain area where you really get a lot of value out of it i know for me um you know when we take like trips overseas and things like that and we get to do training with people who really couldn't really afford some of the things that that you and i do uh, when we come back after that it's there's a lot of work to it but it, it's just so rewarding when you come back. It's almost overwhelming. Uh, I, I really like that in particular. Is there something that, that you really like? I do, yeah. And, and when you're saying that, it's, it's being able to give to help other people. Okay. So I like looking at it from, from a business standpoint, from a career standpoint. And being able to give to the next generation okay. so that they can be more fulfilled and also to help them with their career. So if you're looking at giving back, it's like being a mentor to them, to help them be successful. And it's the capability of saying, those school, the school of hard knocks that I've grown up with and, and what has made me successful in my career, can I help someone else so that maybe they're not, not quite as hard? Okay. So it kind of, kind of paved the way a you little have bit. A, do you have a good example of that? Not really. No. <laughs> I have to edit that out. <laughs> well, I think it actually, it, it, I do have examples, and, and it's when you're helping someone who's coming into, uh, into the workforce, for example, and they may be incredibly charged, incredibly uh, energized. So how do you keep that level of enthusiasm, but also help them to focus and maybe sort through their own mind and how they want to, what they want to accomplish okay yeah um, you know this whole idea about being selfless versus selfish I mean we say that a lot especially with this principle um, I think most successful people and now now again we go back to how do you determine or define success but I think most really successful people are selfless um, they're not selfish the ones that are I mean maybe you you have you know, if people are just defining uh, success as just monetary or things, material stuff, I think we've met a lot of people like that are just selfish. But the really successful people, uh, I find, are more selfless, wouldn't you say? Definitely. Okay. Um, any good examples of anybody that you know in, in your life that's more like that? Um, I know for me, you know, one of the biggest people, actually two, 
uh, of the biggest people in my life that were more selfless with their time, resources, and things like that were actually both of my grandmothers. One's still living. Uh, she's still alive and well and, and raising Cain uh, still to this day. Um, but they just, they give of themselves. They give more of their resources. I've seen them do it. Like I've seen that example over and over and again. And I've just seen them be so selfless. And what I mean by that is they, they don't, they didn't necessarily have their agenda there. And maybe that's what you're talking about when you're saying mentoring people. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but when you mentor people and, and take them to that next level, you're really giving them your time. But the, all, the other thing is, I, th- I don't think you hold the, there's no agenda there, right? You're just, mm-hmm. what is your agenda? How can I help you? Is that, would that be fair to say? It, most definitely. Okay. Yeah. It's those things that uh, even young children remember as they're growing up. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about that, I was thinking about my parents. Okay. And in particular, a story that my nieces and nephews talk about, because it's the same thing that happened to me when I was younger. Big wintry snow day. So we're off from school. So uh-huh. everybody's really happy about that. My mother made, made homemade raised donuts. So it's an all day process where she would have the dough, the yeast, and then you'd cut out the individual donuts and have them all over the countertop in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And they'd wait for them to raise, and oh, then wow. you'd fry them, and they'd taste so good. So I remembered that as a child, and then sure enough, when my nieces and nephews would have that wonderful snow day, she invited them out to come out and just spend time wow. with her, and they made raised donuts. And now they're really wonderful young adults, 30s and in their 40s, and that's one of their best memories of their grandmother, my mom. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I have another story. I'm, I'm going to try to tell it on this podcast, but every time I, I seem to tell it, it just chokes me up because it takes me back to an, the, the power of being a giver. And it doesn't take, I think when people say, hey, like be a giver, give, 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 and, and people go to that, really that poverty mindset of, well, I don't have anything. Now, you you noted one of the greatest things that, you know, just to be a listening ear. You know, you can do that. It doesn't take tons and tons of, of resources to do that. It's just the little things over and over and over again. So this, as this story goes, it was it was a few years ago, and my son and I were out at uh, we were out at a Chinese restaurant, and we were just getting some things to go. And behind us was this oh, this is a cute old couple. Um, I'm going to say they were probably in their 80s, but they were, you could tell they had been married for a long time. And he had uh, a hat on, and the hat said World War II veteran. And uh, I just thought, well, you know, let me just pay for his meal. What was funny is they only, you know, here's my son and I, and we have both our our meals to go in these big boxes. The two of them only had one. And it was obvious that they were going to, you know, just share it for the evening. And I said, well, I just, I'd like to pay for the, the gentleman behind me. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of an emotional story because as I paid for that, you know, she said, hey, it's been paid for. And I just turned around and I said, hey, thanks for your service. And uh, what come next just completely overwhelmed me because he started to tear up. I mean, I think the total was like eleven dollars and ten cents. I mean, it's like it's mm-hmm. not a lot of uh, of money to most people. But he started to tear up and with such appreciation. And I just I moved my son out real quick because I just got emotionally overwhelmed. And uh, I got to the car because I didn't want to think everybody was ha- I was having a, like a <laughs> breakdown, or anything like that. But I mean, it just moved me so much. I got in the car, I started crying. I was overwhelmed, and my son said. Dad, what's wrong? I said, nothing. Like, absolutely nothing is wrong right now. I feel so good. But the graciousness that came from that man was overwhelming from a meal that was only $11.10 and or whatever it was. I mean, it was it was just completely overwhelming. And that's when I it just reinforced again this whole idea of... If we're going to make the world a better place, if we're going to make ourselves better, if we're going to be more successful, we can't be all this, hey, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, consume, 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 consume. Being a giver has 
great benefit to people. Um, so that you know, that's the story uh, that I have. I don't know if you have any any more tips to give us right now or anything. I think the the main thing is that um, when you can move the needle from pointing towards you, and you can move that noodle, needle so it's pointing out towards other people, it's how those other people feel and react to you. It, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. When you start giving, and they remember that, they remember that more than any type of, like you said, the monetary value is can be a satisfier or dissatisfier, right. but it's that emotion, that connection that I find so rewarding. Yeah, and uh, you know, I just really, I'm going back to, you know, when I, when I think of success for people, and when I say, well, anybody because I give a, a, a lot of this this talks about success to, to younger kids even that they say well you know I don't have a lot of money or anything like that but you do have the availability you do have the availability to do something to listen to be a good listener to to go to your neighbor and whatever you know shovel their driveway cut their grass and for some people it's just you know my wife and I have just stopped by uh, to see um, you know part of our family last night you know it's not always convenient um, but when people are, are locked in you know some like these are just older folks that we stop to say hi to they're extremely appreciative of mm -hmm. just that hour or so of time and it you know it just takes me doing that or us doing that and going over and doing it. it didn't take it necessarily any resources unless you want to count the gas that from from here to there but it's not much uh, but it, it really just is just giving your yourself and and not being so inwardly consumed uh, and when that happens you just start thinking about yourself now i think you can be successful monetary wise but as this principle goes i really don't think i've never met anybody that is truly successful in all areas of their life that has not uh, been a giver. And I go back to that quote by Winston Churchill that we started this with. He said, you know, we make a living by what we get. We, we create a life by what we give. And, uh, you know, just, just being a giver, being selfless, right? So just to recap what we've said here, uh, we've said, you know, be selfless. I really want to, to think about how, how you give, right? What are we giving? Is it, is it, doesn't necessarily have to be money it could be time it could be uh, whatever other resources you might have availability it could just be your presence but it also could be hey just look being a great listener and then I'll, I'll end with uh, the the tip that you gave everybody so because it, it, to me it's so profound which is just moving the needle mm -hmm. get off your own agenda move the needle don't move it towards yourself move it towards others and that's the way to become uh, a real good giver. Do you have anything to, to end us with before I... No, I think you summarized it really well. All that's right. Good. Well, thanks for, for being here, Colleen. Uh, you're a big part of our team, and uh, I know it's something that's near and dear to your heart, so I thank you for, for the time that you spent. Uh, the challenge that I have for everybody, is, as far as it goes, for giving... Uh, is a quote that I heard uh, from somebody. I really didn't make it up, but I don't know who said it. I just I just copied it down years and years ago, and it was so profound at the time. Uh, it's a it, it, don't give till it hurts, give till it feels good. So those of you that want to challenge this week as you listen to this podcast, go out, get the needle off yourself, move it towards others. If you want to be successful, be a good giver, and don't give till it hurts, give till it feels good. In wrapping up, if you need help, if you need help with any of these concepts that you listen to over these podcasts, uh, or just help moving, moving the needle in your own life, you can connect with us at centerforvictory.com, or you can call our office at 724-462-8383. And as we end, just remember, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, make this your best day yet. Take care.